I'm Eric Olson. I'm with the University of Washington Sea uh, Grant Program, and I've been there uh, serving as uh, oil spill prevention education specialist um, for almost 20 years now. I've been working with oil spill prevention and response, you know, for a good portion of my career. I retired Coast Guard, and in the Coast Guard, I had a number of uh, opportunities to respond to both small and large spills. Well, I have I have kind of an affection and commitment to the Gulf Coast. I it started back in 1969 when I was living in Biloxi, and Hurricane Camille hit, and I did some relief work there. And then uh, then with the Katrina hurricane coming through, I contacted uh, some of the folks at uh, Louisiana Sea Grant, and I uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to assist there. So I really had a connection with. Gulf Coast. It's like everyone else, we're just glued to the TV watching that wellhead spew oil. And I just felt a real need to, um, you know, to do something. And I, you know, I discussed it with my uh, supervisors and, and they said, well, if you can find a way of helping, go for it. So I was uh, contacted by the Coast Guard and notified that I've been, I've been appointed to their technical evaluation team to review um, alternate uh, alternate response uh, technology proposals and these were initially these were reviewed by BP and the Coast Guard intervened and said well we really need a more transparent process they were getting deluged with thousands and thousands of proposals from academics from, from just public citizens and um, they needed assistance and so uh, they farmed these out and as I said, I was fortunate enough to be in a position that I had some of the skills and, uh, to be able to assist. A lot of 80-hour weeks because these proposals just, they, there was a short turnaround time. They had to be turned around in three days. And so you'd have a batch of them on the weekends. And it would just, basically it took my summer. I worked with, uh, with no, mostly NOAA personnel and their scientists. And uh, we each shared um, a batch of proposals as they came in. Um, they were usually like four or five page proposals. Uh, re and then reviewing them and doing a lot of research because a lot of them were, there were technical issues that needed to be resolved. And it's also, you have to decide, they might have been technically sound, but is there a need for it? And I think that was one of the biggest problems is because we were working under a non-disclosure agreement. So we didn't have the liberty of really discussing a lot of these. To, and yet you needed answers. So it was, it was, the toughest part was trying to mesh the application, you know, the actual proposal and finding a need for it, because a lot of these were very technically sound. One of the most enlightening things uh, I did was I had an opportunity to listen in on the daily NOAA briefings. And I really, it was really interesting because in addition to the, getting some real time information on the status of, of this spill, it also, there was a real sense of, uh, of teamwork and a real congenial attitude. And I think that it, it was like being part of a family. And I think that also held true for the Coast Guard, just watching their inter and listening to their interactions. Uh, very professional, but also very respectful of each other's uh, input. I think the key, key word is network. I think that's the biggest strength of Sea Grant. And I also, I also think, somebody said, what do you really offer? And I, you know, I dwell on this a lot, but I really believe it is that what I offer is credibility. It's taken years to develop a, a place in the community where people feel comfortable. And I think most secret agents, I, I think that's the biggest thing they have. Because there's a lot of information out there, especially with the web. People can go many places and to many other people to get information. But they really want to reach out to somebody that they can trust.